I'm going to talk a little about FM2. Uh, the last time it was released was last Monday, and the new version is 3.25, and I've already been shown a bug in it, so back to the drawing board. Um, it was Mark Kimes who called it the Swiss Army Knife of File Managers. He was the original author. And um, I think we started working on it back in like 2006, so it's been quite a while. It's basically a file manager. <coughs> and it's got a lot of basic functions, but it's got a lot of different ways to access those various functions. Um, its accelerator keys are pretty much atypical, so you really have to go in and figure out what they are. And unfortunately, they do vary some from dialogue to dialogue. Um, you also can pretty much customize it for all kinds of viewers and things. You can use whatever text viewers, binary viewers, compare tools, things like that that you like. Next slide. Um, it also has a collection of system tools. It has a kill process um, tool, undelete. <coughs> that one works with the OS2 um, Dell directory. It also will use the um, trash can for delete if you wish. It's one of the <coughs> settings that it has direct access to the various palettes, the fonts and colors. There's an instant um, command file dialog and basically what that is, it's a dialog you can open, write a series of commands in and then it'll run just like a CMD file would. So if you have something that you want to do quickly, has um, command lines, which are also savable. So if you have command lines that you use regularly, um, or command lines where you have several different variations on something, depending on the switches you want, you can save those command lines and access them quickly. It creates shadows and objects directly. Um, does partitioning, formatting, and check disk, all of those are just calling the system tools themselves. Next slide, please. <coughs> Object creation. Creates real objects, it also will create shadows. You can also create a Java executional, executable object from a jar file. You pick the jar file, you pre-pick which of the various Java EXEs you want to use to run these, and then you can save the selection, you can put an icon on them, and they run the Java pro program directly. Um, they even will click create a folder for you if you wish. Again, you can view files. Um, <coughs> you, um, we have enhanced the uh, email and URL links in the viewer internal viewers if you want to use those so that they work much better. We also made them look a little prettier. Um, you can also use your favorite text editor or your binary editor or viewers and you can have one viewer for each binary and text and then an additional editor for each binary and text. And all of those are just selected off the menu once you put them in the <coughs> setup. Um, you also can tell it if you pick a, a URL or a mail to or an FTP link, you can tell it what program you want it to use to um, open that particular type of uh, link. We also have associations and we have our own. They're separate from OS2s and the advantage to that is you can easily associate some file type with two different things and oftentimes you want to open things with different files depending on exactly what you're doing. And it's really easy to switch between them because if you double click on it, you open with our association. If you control double click on it, you open with OS2s. So it's quite transparent. You can also put in a series of commands um, which you can run. I, for example, will I put build bevel in it 
so that I can just run build level on a DLL or a EXE directly from FM2 without having to go out and fiddle around with command line. Um, there are a lot of things that I do with that. In fact, I can quickly show you, give you an idea. That's my command line. That's my commands that I've created. Only the do it yours. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. That's okay. I'm thinking that I was doing this with this computer, but I'm not. Sorry. Um, and they also, up across the top is a toolbar, which um, you can create custom tools with it so that you can actually either drag and drop files onto the tool or you can select the tool and push the button on the toolbar and activate it <coughs> on that file. Next slide. Okay. Um, have other types of viewers. We can view archives. Um, out of the box, it supports 12 different archive types and 33 different configurations of those. Um, you can add your own. It actually has a dialogue for creating those ar archivers. Um, obviously, you have to get the archivers. Essentially, all of them are available on Hobbs Archive. Um, it edits any files and um, also regular and extended attributes are editable from it. Next slide. Have you found any critical PAs yet? Uh, no, I haven't, but um, apparently Steve thinks they exist because he fixed our ability to handle critical EAs. <laughs> well, yeah, you can make them, but I, I don't, I've never seen one. <coughs> um, other ones we have are compare directories. Compare directories is quite nice because you can compare, like, if you have two different installs where you've got the same thing installed on two different drives, you can quickly check to see if you really actually updated both of them to the newest version by just running this on the two directories. You can also take a snapshot, which is just save a list file of a directory, and then use that snapshot file to compare with to see how that directory has changed over the last period of time to see, you know, if you've gotten something out of sync, things like that. Uh, see all files, I'll admit I don't use, but it'll allow you to load all the files off of a drive all together into a single container and manipulate them however you're interested in. Seek and scan files is <coughs> just exactly that. It, you can find um, duplicates, and you can even specify the kind of duplicates you want to find. Um, <coughs> it, um, you can save your common searches. And as you can see with the asterisks, a lot of these are just standalone programs, which you can run alone without running FM2. Next slide. <coughs> um, the file collector. Most of the time you fill the file collector by using seek and scan. It just gives you a collection of files, but you can select files for collection in other ways. Um, the help and INF bookshelf viewers are kind of nice for you to be able to find um, a help file in a reasonably quick period of time. And then I already talked about you can save file names to the clipboard. You can save full path names to the clipboard. You can also create a file that's either a single file or a list of files. And the list file, you can save whatever attributes of that file that you would like to show. You can even save the um, subjects and things of that nature if you wish. Some drive organizing tools. Directory size is really nice when you get up there and you're looking at this and you go, why won't this copy to this drive anymore? What's wrong? And of course, the drive's full. Gives you a real quick way to figure out what it is that you filled that drive with. 
because it's usually temporary something. <coughs> and then bee tree could be used actually as a drive tree um, replacement because it's basically just that, it's the drive tree. And when you double click on something, it opens a directory container with that directory in it. It's easy to configure for different tasks. It has a thing called states. And the one that you most commonly see is the FM2 shutdown state, which it just saves whatever you, whatever the container configuration was when you save the, when you close the program. But you can also, like I for development for FM2, I open two directories. I open the trunk of the actual source code, and then I open a directory where I keep my te the test program that I run as I, as I um, do it. And then I can just click that single state, and it will set this up to those two containers where I want them. And I oftentimes will stick those into um, command files that I use to set up my programming environment. So the last thing it does is open this to that state and um, give me that setup so I'm ready to go. There's an FM2 Lite, which is basically FM2, except it only, you can only have two containers in the tree. And there's a few other functionalities that are basically just hidden from you. Because all of this runs off the same DLL. So next slide. And for things that you need to remember, you can save um, user directories. It, it automatically saves recently used directories. Um, the search patterns you want to use, the file masks. Um, you can save as many of those as you want, command lines. Um, with command lines, you can save custom environments. A word of warning, though, about that. Somebody actually should implement that so it does something. I'll have to talk to the developer about that. Um, <coughs> you also have filters. Um, you can remap drives, like if you have um, network drives that are available but not mapped to drive letters, you can map them here. Um, and you can set a default target for everything. That target would be where you copy everything or where you extract your files or things like that. And it's pretty easy to set and unset so that if you're just setting it to do one job, you could set it and then at the end unset it. Because with it unset, um, yes? I believe they are. Yes. Um, and um, when you don't have a default target set, um, the target, if you have two directory containers open, the target from one of them is always the other one. So you don't have to. Oftentimes, you don't have to go searching for things. That's, that's why my setup for FM2 works well, because when I want to copy the, pro the files over to the test directory, it's automatically the target. Um, this is a whole list of utility programs, which I've included for your interest. Mark Kimes wrote all of these. We have the source code for exactly one of them, which I'll point out as we go through. But this is more for completeness than that I'm going to go through all of these different things. Next slide. And next slide. Next slide. Uh, this one, back one. Whoops, one forward one now. Yeah, no, it's back two, I guess. That's okay. Okay, now go forward. It's got to be here. I saw it. Keep going. One more. There it is. FM2 Play EXE is um, kind of a useful program. You can use it as a replacement for the um, for the audio players. 
for ZWMM. And the thing that makes it particularly useful is that it will play MIDI files. The actual, the actual players that come with ZWMM and that come with MMOS2 won't play MIDIs. They just throw an error. But FM2 play will play them. Iconify is also nice. You can batch, um, create um, little icons for, um, for bitmaps and different types of, um, of image files, which show the, the image then is the icon for the, for the program. And you can select a whole bunch of them and just run it, and it does it. I know PMView does basically the same thing, but this is a way to do a quick batch of them if you want to. Uh, next slide. Image EXE is the one program that we have the source to, and it's basically just an image viewer. And next slide. I also use KillPid a lot of times in CMD files to kill a program where I'm going to copy over it and restart it. Next slide, 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 next slide. Next slide, next slide, next slide. Okay, the newest changes. As you can see, Mark Kimes was quite a prolific programmer. And a, a lot of those other utilities are useful for specific types of things. So that if you're looking for something that does a specific job, it's worth thumbing through that list and seeing if it's there already. Okay, the newest changes that we've done, and this is the last couple of versions, is the Java object creation. We've fixed several um, traps on scan and rescan. Um, we fixed some redundant error messages. Um, we've got it set up so that you can automatically unlock a DLL that you're trying to copy over. It will just ask you, and you can say, yes, I want to unlock it. And it would occasionally give some strange error messages. Hopefully, I got rid of all of them. And it checks now on read-only files and actually warns you that you're copying over a read-only file. Historically, it um, just casually copied over it. Next slide. And. I've used FM2. Occasionally, I try to build things that are really big. QT6 comes to mind, um, where you need to try to get as much shared memory as you possibly can. And I found that um, replacing the workplace shell with um, FM2 gives me a little extra memory and basically gives me the same build opportunity as without, with the workplace shell. Um, we enhance the compare drive um, directories to allow inclusion of subdirectories when you're comparing them. So if you want to compare a tree, you can compare everything all the way down the tree. Um, and then I already talked about the read-only files. Next, next slide. Did some cosmetic things. Um, we have a menu toggle for drag and drop and delete dialog boxes. What that means is on one of the configuration menus, you can either say, I want you to give me the dialog that tells me what I'm deleting, or I don't want you to. Um, <coughs> we improved the um, formatting of the dialogs. I also moved the help button into the lower right-hand corner, where at least I think it belongs. Um, the layout, a lot, a lot of it was so that it'll work with some of the larger fonts that um, the new font change stuff that uh, Alex and Rich Walsh did. Um, so it works pretty well up to extra large fonts. Anything bigger than that will still 
corrupt it, but it's better at least. And um, we limited the help open on quick setting page to once per session. What that actually means is the first time you opened it and went to the quick settings page, it would actually pull up the help for settings to try to be helpful. Well, it wasn't very helpful when you, the fourth time that you pulled up the quick settings page because by default, the help always opens to the same page that you last opened to unless you put it to, a con to context for something else. And so um, it would open every time, so we fixed that. Next slide. Uh, yeah, we fixed a trap on rescan while you were while you, while a scan was running, and fixed failure to create real objects. Uh, fixed some memory leaks. The last two were both really memory leaks. The broken linkage meant that whatever was between two spots in a container. Uh, it didn't know they were there. They, you could see them and everything, but it couldn't delete them because it couldn't access them. Uh, next slide. And a few more traps. I uh, had an interesting one where there was a no drop message. You try to drop into the tree container. It was only on the first subdirectory <laughs> of a tree. The second subdirectory worked fine. The top directory worked fine, but that one subdirectory didn't. And no, I did. And they weren't read only. They were, they all were all the same. Also, there was some cosmetic things in the compare file dialogs <coughs> where, where we had these interesting. While there were no file, there was no file name because there was no file. The times and dates were all zeros, which is kind of an odd date. <coughs> And um, we moved the scanning to a background thread to try to improve some of the performance. Next slide. <coughs> it really, it will run in high memory if somebody wants to set it to run in high memory. We made all of the functions that it uses high memory safe. I don't run it that way because it doesn't take that much memory and it would do some occasional flaky things when it was up there. Um, we fixed some of the direct edits, which is where you just type on a, a label, a file name or something like that, and you can rename it right there in place just by typing on it. Um, <coughs> and now, that now works correctly. And we fixed some other kind of under the hood sort of things like it attempting to double free container items as opposed to not freeing them. Maybe it was to make up for the ones that it didn't free. <laughs> Next slide. And some issues that probably still need to be addressed. <coughs> Apparently I still have drive tree co corruption of the different names in it that is occurring because I got shown that just a little bit ago. Um, well, CUA um, standard compliance for key assignments try to rationalize some of our strange key assignments. Need to use ISO units everywhere. Uh, get that environment to work would probably be a nice idea. And we'd like to get Archiver 2 to, to actually allow you to view an RPM, view the contents of an RPM file. And, um, <coughs> and allow some command line and file mask, allow file masks string and strings <coughs> to be passed from the command line. Right now, if you open seek and scan, the standalone seek and scan, you can't tell it anything until it's open. And we want to add to the command line that you can put, okay, search for star.c and search for printf or whatever it is you wanted to, and that it would come up and immediately start the search. Uh, next slide. Well, thank you for your time. Any other questions? Okay, thank you.